Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Cassandra and this is Romance and Rosé. And it is finally July, which means it's time to do my monthly reading wrap up where I go through all the books that I read in the previous month. So let's go through my Goodreads for June. I actually started off the month really strong with a buddy audio listen with some of my friends over on TikTok and Instagram. We listened to The Architect by Nikki Sloan and it was narrated by some of my really good friends, Angelina Rocca and Brennan Landry. They did a phenomenal job and I gave this a four out of five star. I wanna tell you the spice. Outrageous, outrageous. June actually kind of felt like a slow month for me. I read about 12 books, which for some may seem like a lot. For me, that's like on the lower end of average. My husband and I listened to the audiobook for Happy Trail by Daisy Prescott. This was, enjoyable, but I, it was only about a three star read for both of us. We found ourselves kind of having to push through some of the middle stuff. Um, and that's why in the end, even though we did finish it and we did enjoy parts of reading it, it definitely felt like the three star range for both of us. I tried reading The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. I really did. Um, and I got about 65, 70% maybe, um, but I just, I was never excited to open it. I felt like it was taking a long time to get to the point. So for that reason, I DNF'd. It is one of those books that I may revisit in the future when I'm more in the mood. I am a mood reader. So sometimes even a book that is well-written and that people love, if I'm just not in the right headspace for it, um, I will DNF. I will say it is rare that if I DNF even a book that I know is good, that I will revisit it, but you never know. Um, but I am including it because I feel like I got far enough into it to where I, I read most of it. So, so there is, but I'm not giving it a star rating because since I didn't finish it, I don't feel like I can give it a fully formed star review. Then I read Reckless by Elsie Silver. If you have not read her Chestnut Springs series, what are you doing? What are you doing? Every day is cowboy romance era, okay? Um, I'm obsessed with this entire series. Elsie Silver can do no wrong. And with Reckless, I feel like when it comes to male heroes, she really knocked it out of the park. Theo Silva, he's just almost as perfect as you can be. There is one book that I read this month um, that has, they're pretty neck and neck as far as book boyfriend perfection, but I'll talk about that one towards the end. <laughs> then there was an Audible sale and I, I had to indulge. So I ended up buying the entire Fallen Men series by Gianna Darling on audio. When I tell you, I did a reread of Welcome to the Dark Side. I had never listened to the audio for it. It was perfection, just as good as physically reading, maybe even better because Jason Clark and Desiree Ketchum are phenomenal narrators. Uh, but then I ended up moving on after that five-star perfect book, it has been one of my favorites of all time, to the next in the series, Good Gone Bad. And that was narrated by Lucy Rivers and Troy Duran, who are also very talented, respected narrators. And I gave that one a four star. It, it was really good. Not, It didn't hit the right spots for me that Welcome to the Dark Side did, but it was still very important to the series um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. QB Tyler came out with a new release. It is a spicy bodyguard romance called Keep Her Safe. When I tell you she is known for more like pretty taboo, almost always forbidden romances, always intense spice. This was less taboo in topic because although it was still forbidden, he was still her bodyguard, they're consenting adults. So there really wasn't any super intense societal reason why they shouldn't be together, but it may be the spiciest book she's ever written. And that's saying a lot. <laughs> I loved everything about it and I gave it five stars. Then I had a bunch of people bullying me on the internet to read Bait um, by Jade West because they know that I'm into primal play and this book is everything that embodies that. I did buy the audiobook for it in the audible sale because it was like $1.99 and two minutes in, 
couldn't do it, was not for me, and that's okay. Although I do love audiobooks, not every narrator and not every audiobook is going to be to your taste, and this definitely wasn't for me. So I did end up physically reading this book, um, and babes, you guys weren't wrong. I did, I really enjoyed it. If you are into Primal Play, a little bit of CNC, Dubcon, um, pierced male members, <laughs> if you like it a little bit rough, um, age gap, all that good, good, good. There's mystery too. It, it was good. I ended up giving it, I think like a 3.75 out of five stars, but on Goodreads, I did round up to a four. Another five star read, I read Royally Not Ready by Megan Quinn. It is a spicy princess diaries retelling. Stop. Does that get you excited? Because it gets me excited. I loved that movie. Megan Quinn, she not only writes really funny, good spice in person, she's just like sweet as a peach and I love her. So that last month, she also released her sequel to that duet, Royally in Trouble. I have not picked that one up yet because they're not standalones. You had to read Royally Not Ready to read Royally in Trouble. Um, and so I just, I haven't gotten around to that one yet because I hear that one's more drama than like comedy and it's, I'm a little scared, but people say it's all worth it to do it. So maybe this summer I will, I'll get around to that one too. Then another five star read, but if I could give it a hundred stars, I would. This is definitely gonna be in my top five or three reads of 2023. I'm obsessed with it. It's the funniest, spiciest, just most enjoyable read I have read all year. And that is Not So Lucky by Trelina Pucci. Not only is Trelina 100% the funniest person I have met online, but also in person, um, it translates perfectly into conversational comedy in her books. Um, I was laughing the whole time, literally sending her DMs at three in the morning because the second this hit my Kindle, I dropped everything. I told my husband, sorry, um, I'm not sleeping tonight. So enjoy your beauty rest. I'll just be here. <laughs> um, I love this book so, so much. And it comes out July 3rd, which is just a few days from now, babes. It's tomorrow actually. <gasps> at the time I'm filming this. So by the time it's posted, it will probably be out on KU and Amazon. Um, so do yourself a favor, do me a favor, go read this book. Then I also in the Audible sale got The Beast by Jenica Snow. This was a just not serious at all, like two and a half hour spicy audio that kind of read like just a really good Beauty and the Beast erotic fan fiction story <laughs> where the Beast was never human. There's really not a curse. It's a monster romance. So if you grew up obsessed with Beauty and the Beast, but kind of had that aw feeling when he turned into a human prince, um, this may be for you. If you like primal play, if you like breeding, copious amounts of male fluid are involved. But did I enjoy every second of it? Yeah, I, I, I freaking did. And then on a more serious note, I read Your Last First Kiss by Avery Maxwell, another five star read. But instead of this being five star because it was like funny and like spicy and crazy, this was five star because it was just very beautifully written, a very realistic um, and empowering love story about a single mom finding love with someone who really wanted to help her um, carry like the burden of her responsibilities and her stresses with like raising her boys and other just chaotic things that happen when real life is involved. Um, I just felt like it, it had a really great message and it was an encouraging, beautiful read. And the main character, Dylan, in this book, he he's the one who is compatible to Theo Silva from Reckless. They're neck and neck. I don't know who won book boyfriend of the month this month between the two of them. They're both so freaking perfect. <sighs> so I'm gonna give it a tie. 
I'm gonna give it a tie. They're both delightful. And because that one left me feeling a little bit emotional, which is sometimes kind of uncomfy for me to feel, um, I quickly barely finished off the month. It was like just under midnight. I read a Jessica K novella. And if you don't know me, um, she's one of my guilty pleasure authors. She writes very short, spicy novellas. Um, and this one, what was called? What was it called? Daring the Doctor. <laughs> And it was just everything that I needed it to be. It was just spicy and possessive and just everything that I look for in a Jessica K novella. Like I said, I usually read two to four of these a month, but this month it just flew by so fast that this was the only one I got around to. Those were all the books that I read in June. I felt like it was a pretty good month. Definitely more five-star reads than I am used to giving out. So even though I read not as many books as I usually do, I felt like the quality was over quantity this month. And honestly, that's better. That's better in my opinion. Um, this was a really good month for books. And I'm so excited for July because there are so many more incredible books coming out please leave me in the comments any books that you're looking forward to that are coming out this summer or this month just I'm always looking for more book recs um, and let me know if you have read any of the books that I mentioned and what you thought of them like I said there are some really good ones that's it for this video thank you so much for watching make sure to like and subscribe and hit that little bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my just delightful, spicy romance bookish content.